Interested in growing your own Southwest pepper garden? Well, here's chili expert Dave DeWitt from Albuquerque, New Mexico to explain the process from seed to salsa. The main use of my greenhouse is for starting chili plants from seed. Since most nurseries have limited varieties of chili seedlings for sale, chili head gardeners are forced to buy or trade for exotic seed. In the dead of winter, I search seed catalogs to find new varieties that I'd never grown before. Often, most of my seed comes from collectors who offer their unusual varieties through listings in the Seed Savers Exchange yearbook. This year, in addition to the New Mexican varieties that I'll roast, peel, and freeze, I've selected New Mexican Centennial, Serrano, Habanero, Cayenne, Bulgarian Carrot, Lemon Drop Ahi, Chinese Yellow Emperor, and Bonnie Peppers from Barbados. After selecting the seeds, I prepare the plastic grow cells by filling them up with a mix of potting soil, perlite, and vermiculite. I wet the mixture and place two seeds in each cell. Each variety is carefully labeled with a tag and recorded in a log. The cells are placed in trays and the trays positioned on heating coils for quicker germination. At any time during the winter or spring, prepare the garden site. First, always add organic material such as aged manure or compost. Manure is particularly important because it is also your natural fertilizer. Next is the mixing of the organic material into the soil. I need the exercise, so I use a shovel to loosen the garden, but feel free to use a rototiller. Finally, with the shovel, I form the plot into rows and furrows for irrigating in the dry climate of New Mexico. The pepper garden is now ready for the plants. The next step in the garden, after the final frost of the spring, is to transplant the seedlings into the garden plot. I dig small holes in the garden, spacing the seedlings about a foot and a half apart. Then the seedlings are placed in the hole, tagged with their code number, and watered thoroughly. Then I mulch the seedlings with newspaper weighted down with soil to keep it in place. Other pepper gardeners mulch with plastic film or grass clippings. In order to survive, chilies have a few basic wants and needs. Watering. Regular and measured watering is best. And remember that overwatering can lead to fungal diseases on the roots. Fertilizer. If you use manure in the plot, as we suggested earlier, it is unlikely that chilies will need further fertilization. Weeding. Even with mulch, those evil weeds will somehow find a way to grow. Always pull them immediately. Pest control. Use organic techniques when possible, like netting over the chilies to keep off pests. Hot pepper wax containing capsaicin is a natural insecticide for aphids and white fly. So, barring a hailstorm, extremely high winds, a virus infection, or chili-loving rabbits, your plants should look like these. There are many types of pungent pods you can grow, from eye-catching ornamentals, to colorful serrano chilies, to Big Jim, a great choice for making chilies rellenos. For more information on growing your own chili pepper garden, contact the Chili Pepper Institute at New Mexico State University.